Hey guys, Super Mario Music here, and we are back for another Five Nights at Freddy's retrospective. Let's go! Previously, we looked at Chica and Foxy. In this yes, video, we, we take a look at the history behind another classic animatronic, Bonnie. So sit back, relax, and let's take a nostalgic walk down memory lane as we explain everything we know about Bonnie and his various iterations over the years. Alright, let's go. Bonnie is one of the four main animatronic mascots to appear in the original Five Nights at Freddy's back in 2014. As mentioned, his design is based upon the look of a rabbit or hare. This is fairly evident when we look at his bunny ears and facial features, especially the nose and mouth. Yeah. His body is purple with blue hues and grey highlights from top to bottom. Also, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you on man. I thought Bonnie was gonna be a chick. I know he doesn't look feminine or whatever. I thought Bonnie was gonna be a chick because it's the same with Foxy. Like Foxy, Bonnie, to me, those are like female names or whatever, but hey man, let's just get into it. <laughs> Inside this outer shell hangs an endoskeleton. Bonnie wears a red bow tie and carries his signature instrument, the electric guitar, hey. which he plays in the Fazbear Band alongside Freddy and Chica. Because the name Bonnie is feminine, some players do incorrectly assume Bonnie is a female. That's what I just said! Yo, and it's the same. I said the same sh in the Foxy reaction video. Hey, man, that's funny, man. That's funny. Male character. However, he is very much male. Okay. This trivia was confirmed around launch and since has been made further apparent with the character's voice reveal. We can hear Bonnie sing in this clip from the unused Showtime song from FNAF Help Wanted. Bonnie's my name. I'm hopping along with floppy ears and a cotton tail. My guitar is blazing, this rabbit's hair raising, just listen to me well. Hey. Hey, the voice of Bonnie in this musical number belongs to Joe Gordett, an actor who also played several roles in the FNAF minigame mashup Ultimate Custom Night. Despite being given a voice for the Showtime theme song, Bonnie does not speak in any of the mainline games, what? even the most recently released AR game, Special Delivery. What Bonnie does do, however, is make some very disturbing groaning sounds. Take a listen. Hey yo, what the? Oh hell nah! Now nobody knows exactly what this sound is and why it would emanate from Bonnie's endo. The most popular theory used to explain these creepy noises can be found when looking at the tragic story behind all of these animatronics. Five children went missing and, as we play through the games, we discover their disappearance was linked to the deranged creator of the technology behind the Fazbear animatronics, William Afton. Mm -hmm. Afton kidnapped and killed children whose souls then became trapped within these various animatronics, including Bonnie. Bastard. So this wheezing is thought to be the sound of a dormant soul belonging to the child within, what? struggling in pain and agony. While playing the original FNAF, Bonnie attacks the player in a very specific way. He moves from the main stage of a pizzeria to the left side of a restaurant, where he appears first in the dining room, then backstage, and later either the West Hall, supply closet, or behind the office door. Eventually, he will show up in the left doorway, where, if we are not quick enough to react, he sneaks inside the office. Bonnie does not immediately jump scare the player like the other animatronics, however. He waits until we raise up the surveillance monitor and then attacks after we lower it. While Bonnie is the most active of the animatronics, he what? is also the easiest to avoid. He certainly moves around the pizzeria quickly, but doesn't linger outside the door for very long, making power conservation fairly simple when he's around. But what was the influence behind Bonnie when FNAF mastermind Scott Corfin sat down to create him? Well, much like the other early animatronics found at Fazbear's, seems to have originated from various mascots belonging to fast food chain Chuck, Chuck e. Cheese. Cheese yes. In the case of Bonnie, the two most likely candidates would be Mr. Munch, on. due to his purple colour and chunky build, and Jasper T. Jowls, as he was a guitarist in the band. Ah. 
Bonnie also has some of the coolest and creepiest secrets and easter eggs out of any animatronic from the entire FNAF series. Perhaps the reason for this is because out of all Scott Cawthon's creations, Bonnie is the one who terrifies him the most. In fact, during development of the first FNAF game, Scott actually suffered nightmares from the Purple Rabbit, saying the following. I actually think Bonnie is the scary one. I had numerous nightmares about Bonnie while I was developing the game. What? The other three never scared me that much. So what Why Bonnie, were some these creepy Bonnie themed anomalies? Well firstly, when switching to the stage camera at the beginning of the night, on rare occasions, Bonnie and his companions will stare ominously back as if they can sense us watching them. Hell no. Nah. Bonnie's face also appears for a brief moment staring directly into the camera in super close up if the player is unlucky enough to trigger it when changing cameras. This can be startling to say the least. However, the most horrifying scare of all comes from an instance where after triggering a game over screen or when booting into the app, an eyeless Bonnie appears full screen. Yikes. There is only a 0.1% chance of encountering this screen, which is why it never fails to take people by surprise. Oh, Eventually, okay. the eye sockets light up white and the game will return to the title screen a second later. This particular scare likely originated from a real life incident which caught Scott off guard during early development. I scared myself a few times, yes. When I was making the AI, I just had a still image of the bunny in your face for when he got into the office, nothing animated. I wasn't expecting to see it the first time and when I lowered my camera, it gave me a good jump scare. That's when I knew I was onto something. Let's go! It's also interesting to note that in the original trailer for Five Nights at Freddy's, it is Bonnie who runs down the left hallway in place of Foxy, meaning Bonnie's gameplay mechanics likely changed at some point during development. So we've now taken a detailed look at Vanilla Bonnie, but what about some of the alternate forms he has taken over the years? Let's take a look at some of Bonnie's other incarnations. Alright. Withered Bonnie. The first of his FNAF 2 designs, Withered Bonnie is also one of the most unsettling. After scaring younger audiences, Withered Bonnie was retired from use at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and fell into disrepair, hence his Withered name. He has holes along his body revealing the endoskeleton beneath. One of his arms is missing completely, what? and his entire faceplate has been removed, what? exposing his lower jaw and Hell a mess nah. of twisted wires. No, the glow I'm good. of his eye sockets can also be good. seen here. Meeting Withered Bonnie in game is quite an unpleasant experience. In Ultimate Custom Night, Withered Bonnie speaks to the player in a distorted electro voice. Toy Bonnie? Looking far happier and more family friendly, Toy Bonnie was designed to appeal to young children and was created after the original Bonnie design was found to be too scary for younger audiences. He is bright blue with blushing cheeks and deceptively friendly smile. His wide eyes feature long lashes which enhances his seemingly innocent design. Toy Bonnie also has a far smoother texture than his other versions, his skin looking shiny and slick. He first appeared in FNAF 2 and would later resurface in Help Wanted's VR remix of these stages, as well as Ultimate Custom Night and Special Delivery. Mm -mm. In fact, it was in Special Delivery that Toy Bonnie first spoke. What? This is my chance to shine and your chance to fade away. What okay. do we have here? Someone hiding from me? Rockstar Bonnie! With a personality based on singer Frank Sinatra, and a look that sort of resembles a cross between classic and toy Bonnie, this Rockstar version is quite a shake-up for the character. Rockstar Bonnie is not a threat in FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, rather he is purchased as part of the sim aspect of the game and can be used as an entertainer in our restaurant. However, he does show up as an enemy in Custom Night, where he appears in the security office oh, and can only be dispelled if we open our monitor and locate his guitar in time. Fail to do this and a jump scare is received, upon which Rockstar Bonnie will sing to the player in a dulcet tone. What a fine day to come here and say that your face and flesh I must play. Okay. Spring Bonnie? 
Spring Bonnie is of great importance to the story of FNAF, but despite this he never actually appears during gameplay, instead making his appearance during the 8-bit minigames and backstory sequences. The Spring Bonnie suit was used by William Afton to lure his child victims to their demise. However, this suit eventually became William's tomb, as one night while fleeing the ghosts of his victims, Afton hid inside Spring Bonnie, and to his misfortune, the spring lock mechanism snapped shut, mm. slicing him open and causing him to fuse with the insides. This led to the creation of Springtrap, who of course featured in FNAF 3 and was haunted by Afton's spirit. Hold up, so Spring Trap comes from Bonnie? I didn't know that. That's crazy. Bon Bon Bonnie. Let's go. Bon Bon is an animatronic hand puppet belonging to Funtime Freddy, who first appeared in Sister Location and is clearly based upon the Bonnie design. A female version of this character, known as Bonnet, appeared in Ultimate Custom Night, and marks Bonnie's first and only female variant in the series to date. Okay. <laughs> Nightmare Jack O'Bonny? Finally, we have Bonnie's Nightmare rendition from FNAF 4, and the Halloween-themed variant of this design that also featured there, as well as in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC for FNAF Help Wanted. Much of the design is the same across both of these bonnies. Their body is torn and withered, their endo in plain sight. The hands feature clawed fingers, and the mouths are full of several rows of razor-sharp teeth. Where the Jacko version differs, however, is quite apparent. A raging flame-like light emanates from within. What? This gives the nightmare design a far more hellish and demonic appearance, which strikes fear into our every encounter with it. Of course, there are other forms Bonnie has taken over the years in various books and spin-off games such as Freddy in Space. But I hope for now this has been an informative and entertaining look at this particular animatronic. Alright, I'm gonna end the video right there. Let me know what you think about Bonnie. Bonnie is definitely creepy, man. I still, look, I was gonna say Springtrap is the creepiest, but learning that Springtrap comes from Bonnie, I mean, that just makes Bonnie top tier to me. That just makes Bonnie the ultimate scare factor, if you know. But hey, man, let me know which one is your favorite animatronic. I put up a community poll for y'all to vote who's the scariest out of the four. Also, let me know which other animatronic you want me to react to. Salute to Super Horror Bro. Their link will be in the description, along with my membership if you want to become a ch uh, channel member to support my channel. And also, my social medias are going to be down there. This was dope, man. I actually enjoy these a lot. So, uh, keep... Keep your recommendations coming. I'm gonna check out on the next one. Make sure I keep in the positive vibes up, the negative shit out. And with that, I'm out. So stay safe, stay blessed. Always rap on point. Wash your hands, wash your ass. Peace and unity. Till next time, adios.